Ok, agora sim, né? Ok, então, bom dia mais uma vez. Nós hoje vamos falar de simulação e em que é que a simulação pode, nos pode ajudar. Na verdade, como esta cadeira tem muita gente, o ano passado eram 60 e este ano são 40 e muitos, é impossível usar hardware real. E, portanto, o que nós vamos fazer é usar as potencialidades do ROS em inglês, right? We are going to use ROS uh, potential uh, or functionalities in order to, uh, to be able to program robots in a virtual environment, in a simulated environment. I've shown you the simulated environment before. I call it PSR apartment. It's that apartment I've shown you in Gazebo. And uh, today we are going to learn how to use the simulation in, in, uh, in ROS. But first, you have to understand more or less, uh, well, you have to understand what the simulator is and what it does. So, consider this the graph that I have here in board. <laughs> so, this is called robot, so to speak, and uh, but this is something very realistic. So, you can have a camera. So, it would be a driver. That is a program that is running, speaking to the real camera. So, this is called typically the camera driver. And the camera driver is actually speaking to your camera, getting images from the camera. And those are being are, are uh, forwarded to a uh, image which is known, okay? which is doing whatever, it doesn't matter. And you have a light, another sensor. And also, you have a light, of, which is again producing laser scan messaging, collecting scans from the light. And we can use it, for example, for our for optical detection. Okay? And uh, both of these can be used for navigation. That's just one example. Then, so these are the samples. That's what you get from the outside. Typically, we always have sensors in order to perceive what's around them. And then they have actuators in order to uh, do something on the environment. So, we can see the actuation. Uh, so typically they are uh, coupled with motors. You can think of this motor as motor that uh, make the wheels turn the road move forward. And this motor will have a particular angular position. And those are forwarded to the cross uh, system, trunk states. So trunk states are just angle or the uh, velocity of the angular velocities, which are different, you know this already, to the road state publisher, which then produces based on the URDF or shadow description of the robot. So there should be here a ROS parameter, which is called the robot description. Description. Beyond. Uh, so this ROS parameter robot description is also read by the robot simulation, so that it can pick up the description of the topological description of the robot, Combine it with the current joint angles and then produce This can be done, this can be used, for example, to uh, draw things in artists or many other things. Uh, so that's what you get, uh, the information you get from the holders. But these are activators, and therefore we also typically we do some kind of command in order to define what is the plus. And these commands can come from many places. Let's say they come from the navigation, which decides where the road should be or how fast it should go. So, when once this decision is made, these velocity commands, yet the command velocity, are forwarded to the okay. This is how a robot operates when you have the real hardware. Now, the problem of using the real hardware, there are many. Uh, it's costly, so you have to have the robot which sometimes is not. Then you are often able to do these complex things in your own life. You don't want to have to go outside the real world. So, using the real hardware is possible. And therefore, it's very really useful that we can avoid the use of the real hardware for doing some things. Of course, the things that no matter for people that need to have the real but for the first group of lives, they are having a simulation very useful. You can have an alternative to simulation which we studied before, which is the raw bags. So the raw bag, raw bag, 
is a way to address this problem. So that's why what you're doing about that right? is you pick up um, you will pick up all these topics, image when you scan into the states, you put them in a way, so you file, and then uh, when you want to run your system in a way, you, uh, you just you both turn on these nodes and you play back the topics from the back. We've studied this before, okay? So the problem is about space, not from the limitation, is that. But you see, so the topics that you see are exactly the ones that you saw uh, when you recorded the back, which means that, for example, if you are, so you have an image of the row forward. So if you are looking forward in a row, let's say, this is the row, this is your window. Let's say that I'm going to record the rows back. So I'm going to record the rows back and I'm going to move forward all the time. So this will be my image set one. I have the row here. Then I move forward to position blue. And I have my image set blue. Again, I have something like this. And then I move forward to position green. And I have a similar image. So I can actually record the back file. Which will contain all those three images and then uh, launch the system again in playback mode. That's what I call when we are drawing the rods back. And in playback mode, these images will be the black, then the blue, then the green. What's the problem with this or the linkage? It's that if we make a decision here, for example, to turn left after we see the, uh, let's say that we see the black image and we decide to turn left because our navigation system wants to because it's uh, has never whatever so but if we send here a loss and uh, the message to turn left what will happen is that the robot will not be in that position it will be let's say something like this okay after we do this action the robot moves and then we will receive another image which is the blue image that that means it's the image that we recorded in the past where the robot was moving forward. This means that when we are using data from a rough way, the data doesn't change obviously based on the actions of the robot. Well, it changes based on, based on the actions of the robot, but on the past actions when the back file was being recorded, not on the current actions that we are trying to test right now. So these are the limitations of the back files. And to, to solve this, what we use is simulation. Okay. So we can use simulation. So what is a simulator? A simulator is a program that will replace all the programs here. So we do pretend that there is a camera in the robot and act like the camera. Pretend that there is a lighter in the robot and act like the lighter driver. And also pretend that the robot has several motors. All the received lots of the commands and in both of the commands. Typically, the simulation has a physical physical entities, so we can actually use physical a lot of physics in order to predict what happens when we say, for example, if we send a positive command of rotating, let's say one radian per second. I'm not sure if this is far possible. Let's say this is low. Uh, probably what the simulation will do is the road will start slowly moving forward. But if we say that this should be 10 to the power of 6, probably the simulation should be able to understand that the motors are moving fast and that will be okay? So it depends on the accuracy and precision of the simulator, of course. But simulator is going to try to reflect what happens in real life, in real environment. And uh, okay, so now we are going to see two simulators. One very simple one, uh, which is called a fake in terms of lot. And that's a very simple simulator. And then we can pass to the simulator that we are really interested in, which is the zero. So the zero is not the ROS. Well, it's the ROS simulator in the sense that it's like almost exclusively used in ROS, but it's used in some other uh, softwares. 
So because it is not from Ross, it's built uh, by Ross, uh, but it's very powerful and uh, you will see what you can do with this class. Okay. Any question? No? Okay, so we continue We're trying to do the exercises. So my my idea is that you try to do this in a practical class, but I will do it now in front of you, and then we move forward to the in the practical classes you try. So basically, uh, we are going to use okay. So we have the apartment already, so we know that we want to use an apartment, and now what do we want to put? What kind of robot are we going to have? So we are going to use a special robot, which is more or less a standard in ROS, which is called a turtle bot. Okay. This is an educational robot. That means it's a more or less cheap robot, which people can buy. And uh, actually we've uh, purchased uh, four or five of these robots, but they are still uh, uh, incoming. And um, the idea is that you can simulate and then easily use the real robot because you can buy uh, more than one easily, okay? Of course, these robots have limitations, but still they are uh, good enough to test many things. They, there are several flavors of the TurtleBot 3 robot. Actually, what the one we bought is the TurtleBot 4. Mm -hmm. No, it fez bem então, Pepa. Onde é que está o microfone? E agora depois, e agora como é que eu faço isto? Alguém me partilha o ecrã, por favor, no Zoom? Porque senão eu estou aqui bloqueado. Quem é que partilha? Alguém está a partilhar, não? Ok, obrigado. Fiz, obrigado. E agora? Não, eu está ligado no microfone, pá. Ah, ok. Pronto. Então, quem é? Tiago Ávila, pronto, Tiago, já está, já está reprovado. Vamos partilhar outra vez. Uh, ok, temos então aqui os dois flavors do TurtleBot. Nós vamos, por definição, usar sempre o Waffle Pie. Tem uma câmera e tem um lidar. Portanto, esta coisa preta aqui, este cilindro, é um lidar de, de duas dimensões. E depois ali aquela coisa verde é o circuito a, a bordo que tem uma câmera lá no meio. Uh, e, portanto, nós vamos aprender uh, a usar o TurtleBot em modo simulado. Ok, uh, okay. então, como é que nós podemos fazer isto? Uh, portanto, vocês de devem ler isto, eu desta vez não, não, não partilhei o guião antes, portanto a culpa não é vossa, finalmente a culpa não é vossa de não terem estudado isto antes, uh, mas uh, depois uh, convinha que lessem. Uma das primeiras coisas que é preciso fazer é especificar no vosso sistema qual é o modelo do TurtleBot que vocês vão usar. Tipicamente o que nós temos que fazer, como está explicado aqui, agora foi aqui, não é? é escrever uma coisa destas no nosso ponto baixo RC, de forma a que sempre que corremos, BIM, ponto, no meu caso é o ZSHRC, no vosso caso é o ponto baixo RC, uh, está, está aqui, Expo, 161, 161 GG, aqui, export turtlebot underscore model, turtlebot 13 underscore model, waffle pie, que é o como se então, vocês devem escrever isso no vosso ponto baixo RC, ok? Para especificar qual é o turtlebot que nós vamos usar. Depois, um, depois vamos começar então com perceber como é que funciona o um simulador simples. Ok? Portanto, nós vamos usar o TurtleBot 3 Fake, que é, lá está, como todos os simuladores, um programa feito para imitar o que seria um robô real. Só que este Fake é um programa fatela, é um programa que faz muito pouca coisa. Ok? Ainda assim, faz algumas coisas. Uh, e vocês vão ver o que é, eu ponho aqui a correr. Portanto, o que nós vamos tentar fazer é, portanto, o que este nó faz, a única coisa que ele faz é estimar em função do sítio do, do... Portanto, isto é um robô diferencial, antes de explicar o que é que é um robô diferencial? É um robô que tem duas rodas, que okay? vamos chamar a roda 1 e a roda 2, e o que nós controlamos quando mandamos informação para o motor, o motor é necessário the motors with that CMP bell, velocity of the man. So we actually send the velocity of each of the wheels, okay? The angular velocity. And therefore, if you send the same velocity in the both wheels, the robot will do for If you send more velocity on the right two of the actual wheel instead of this one, the robot will do the And so on and so forth. 
The way the world moves and the function of the speed of each wheel is called a kinematic wheel model. Kinematic model. So the kinematic model is an equation or a set of equations which will determine how the world moves based on these velocities. And this is the only thing this turtle model implements is this kinematic model. So we are going to send velocity commands. It will receive them, put them on the equations, and then say, okay, the road is here now. And then it's here after some time. I can show you. Okay. So in order to use this, you just have to launch this. Uh, so we are going to launch the turtlebot 3 fake.launch. Okay. So paste. Okay, so we have here the TurtleBot 3 robot. We already have the, um, the, the CD of the robot. That's uh, because we have here the robot model, okay? So this robot model display type will show the robot by reading from the robot description. I've shown you this before. That's how we, we saw the SCADA. And then we have another display that you don't know about, which is odometry. Odometry is a way to, uh, to evaluate where the robot is moving to, okay? We will talk more about this uh, next class. So I will not spend a lot of time there today. Diga lá, Henrique Nuno, vocês estão aí muito animados, pá? Diga lá, qual é o stress? É tão falar outras coisas, fixe. É a altura certa para falar outras coisas. Uh, okay, so um, right now the simulation is actually happening, but nothing is is moving. Why? Because the, the the fake simulator is actually receiving no velocity commands. So if you do a raw topic list, you can see here that we have here a velocity command. And we can actually uh, publish one of these velocity commands, raw topic. Pub, CMD, val, and then we do tab, and it will automatically expand to the type of message that uh, uh, the CMD val topic is, and then we tab again, and it will automatically expand to the, the content of the message filled with uh, default values, okay? So right now we have what is called a twist message, geometry message is twist. This is a way to specify the velocity that we want in the robot, okay? And uh, so for example, you know in ROS X is always forward. So you can see this, uh, I can draw the axis here. Where are these axes? Not in the fixed frame, but in the base link, okay. Uh, I think they are too small, length two, yeah. Here they are. Okay, so if I do some kind of uh, linear velocity, so for example, if I fill in this X, what will happen is that the robot should move forward. Okay, okay, there he went. Uh, we can actually uh, move, uh, go after him by doing panels, views, and here say that we want to follow the frame base link. Oops, not base, can base link. Okay, now if the robot moves forward, we, we follow him, okay? Um, what was I saying? Ah, do you, have you any idea why it stopped after some time? Yeah, exactly, Jose. It's like a protection. It's called a watchdog. And what happens is that when you send a command message to the robot, uh, something might happen in the robot's program or in the program that is sending velocity. And therefore, this message will only be valid for a certain period of time. If I don't say, so I can't just say, robot, move forward the two seconds and it will move forever two seconds. No, I have to constantly be saying, move two seconds, move two seconds, move something like this, okay? So I have to constantly say, otherwise the robot will stop moving. 
well, we can solve this by here publishing uh, something which I forgot. I think it's 10 to say that it's 10 hertz. No, uh, Ross topic of minus H for help. Uh, minus R, okay. Minus R. Minus R 10 hertz. So now we are constantly sending information and now the robot never stops moving, okay? Because we are sending this topic at 10 hertz. Um, now we have other ways of sending, that's, that's what, okay, well, before that, let me show you the RQT. RQT. Um, plus DF3, means uh, introspection node graph. Okay, so here is the node graph. You have the turtle bot three fake node, which is our simulator. It's receiving velocity commands, publishing the odometry, and the joint states, so the position of the wheels, to the robot state publisher, which then takes this and transforms them into transformation uh, to transformations TFs. Okay. Uh, now that's one of the beauties of ROS, is that this is all modular. What does it mean? It means that we may keep the whole system, well, the right part of the system. So let's say from the turtle bot fake node to the right, we keep, and then we are going to publish com velocity commands using some other node, not a node from the terminal, but actually another program, which is called a teleop, a teleoperation. Let me show you. So now I'm going to shut this one down and you will see that if I refresh, we don't have no one publishing velocity commands. Uh, now we launch the teleop program. And the teleop program is a program that will listen to the keyboards. So this is like a, a Counter-Strike first person shooter, WSAD for left, right, up, uh, forward, backwards. And if I go, so W, I will send velocity commands to move forward. Then, okay, so let's move forward faster. Okay, this, this has a limit in the speed. Uh, didn't have to, but it has. Now I can press A for moving left. Oh, sorry. I always forget to, to shut this one down. So now you can see that the robot is actually moving in circles because the linear and angular velocity are constants. And because the angular velocity is not is, is non-zero. Non uh, let me just shut down the sound, otherwise this may happen again. Okay. What we are seeing here in the red uh, arrows, which I'm going to make smaller, no need, I, I, we can just see. So position tolerance, I can put less arrows. Angle tolerance. Uh, I think I can reset. Perhaps it's too much angle tolerance. Okay, no, yes. So these arrows here are the estimate of, uh, not the estimate, are what the simulator says or where the simulator says the robot is at any given moment in time, okay? So that's the odometry. Uh, that's it for the fake node. Now let's uh, jump into the gazebo, the real thing. Any questions? No? So next, <clears throat> let's start using the gazebo. Um, for the gazebo, uh, well, gazebo will work as follows. You have to start gazebo and then you have to create a scene, a world in which the robot will be on, okay? Because in order to make a simulation, you don't just need a robot, you need a robot and where it is, what are the objects around it in order to simulate, for example, images of the environment that the robot sees around you. Um, so if you go into this turtlebot house uh, dot launch, that's the, the bring up, which will start up uh, a simulation uh, of a turtle bot in a house, I can actually show it first if you want to see what it does. So, ROS launch, TurtleBot 3. Uh, what is it? TurtleBot 3, what? 
I'm not sure. Uh, turtle bot gazebo. Turtle bot three gazebo. Okay. Three gazebo. And now turtle bot three house dot launch. So if you launch this, what we get is this. So we have a scene. Uh, this scene is called turtle bot house. So this is a house that they made in order to test the turtle bot. And then in the middle of the scene, we have our robot, the turtle bot. Okay. Uh, and that launch file launches all of this. Now, this uh, environment is the gazebo. And you can think of the difference between gazebo and RVs as a difference between God and the person. So gazebo, in gazebo, you can do everything. You can pick up objects and say, this is not here. This is actually there. Okay. So I'm moving the world. I'm rotating the world. I can also rotate the world saying, oh, no, no, the house should be like this. Uh, or I can say there should be a new object somewhere near the robot here, for example. So this is a godlike environment where it knows about everything and can do everything. Okay? However, if we are really trying to simulate the robot, we can't give all these powers and information to the real thing because in the real system, in the real world, uh, robotic systems like persons don't have access to all the information, okay? So I can see through my eyes, but I cannot see through your own eyes. Uh, in Gazebo, I would be able to see through everyone's eyes by just changing the perspective. Um, so RVs, conversely, is what the robot sees, only the perspective of a single entity not of the of, of a um, omnipotent entity okay so you can think of gazebo R, gazebo versus rvs in this uh, way and for example uh, here we could launch gazebo uh, sorry rvs and we could see what the robot is seeing but we will do that in the future so i'm not going to do that now you you, you will see how it how it works uh, my point is that this is this is achieved by executing a node that contains a node node, a launch file that contains this, not so much code. So I want us to understand this code and reorganize it. The best way that I have to understand a code when I see it is to change it, to organize it, to put it into different modules. And then I, it starts uh, clicking for me. Uh, so I divided this into four blocks. The first one is just the arguments for the launch file, okay? The second block is how to create a world. So it's here that the system is going to include, include means to call another launch file, uh, which is called emptyworld.launch, where we define the name of the world. In this case, turtlebothouse.world. That's why we got the turtlebot house, okay? So we can see here, if you wanted the apartment, the PSR apartment, we would have to change this somehow. But this block two is to create a world in Kazir. Then block three is where we load the robot description uh, chakra. And you know how this works because we've done it uh, last week already. So we are creating a ROS parameter called robot description. That's uh, the default name, the standard. Uh, by compiling the chakra, uh, which is turtlebot blah, 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 dot rdf dot chakra, okay? So as I told you before, chakras are like URDFs, but only better because they have access to variables and so on and so forth. Um, so the third stage is to load the chakra onto the robot description. So, so to load the description of the robot into the ROS ecosystem. Finally, the fourth block is what we call spawn. I, you, you, most of you probably play Counter-Strike. You know what spawning is. It's to appear somewhere out of thin air uh, uh, in, in a given pose. Our position and uh, so here we use a node which is a spawn model node or script in order to generate a robot and this robot is defined by what is contained inside the robot description parameter okay so first we put the description of our robot into the robot description and then we spawn a robot in gazebo using that uh, uploaded robot description, okay? These are the four main blocks. Uh, if you read through, uh, it's saying more or less what I'm saying here. Uh, I'm not going to read through this because I, I want to have more time. 
And uh, what we are going to do is try to split these four blocks into parts. So basically we are going to split, uh, we're going to create a single launch file for launching the creation of the world. That's block two. We are going to create another uh, launch file to start up our robot. That's the one that will launch block three. And later on more stuff, we call this the bring up. And then we are going to launch, uh, to, to create a new, uh, another launch file, which we are going to call spawn.launch, which will spawn our own, okay? So I will show you how. Uh, uh, by the way, this, this dot .world uh, file is an STF file. So it's a scene description format file, which is very similar to the Chakra that you've studied before. So it's an XML as well. But it contains not only information about the robot, but also about the scene and the ambient light and so on and so forth. Okay, so here I describe my complete scene around the robot. And for describing the scene, I have to define what is the amount of light, where are the light sources, where are the objects, and so on and so forth. Okay, what's the physics engine? This kind of stuff. So nobody knows this by heart. We just take a look and then analyze. Nothing special. Uh, then, uh, okay, then the chakra, you know what it is. So last week we studied URDFs and you were supposed to do at home this, the last exercise for the chakras. And uh, you saw from the URDF, the chakra is very similar, uh, what you saw from the URDF, what the, um, how to describe a robot. Basically what we are describing, the core, is to describe a kinematics chain. Those of you who have industrial robotics are very aware of this, but the kinematics chain is a, a sequential combination of reference frames connected by transformations. And these transformations can be obtained by the position of joints. So for example, from my uh, torso to my, uh, this is the upper arm, the shoulder is a joint that will move the upper arm with respect to the torso, okay? So here in the chakra, we are doing like we did before for the scatter robot, we are defining links, and then we are defining joints to connect those links, okay? Nothing special. Uh, well, there are some extra stuff here that I'm not going to discuss right now, okay? Uh, but you can take a look at it. It's fairly easy to understand, not to write because of the syntax is, is difficult. I, I never know how to write this by heart, but to adapt, it's very easy. Um, so now, the first thing that we need to do, if we're going to have our own robot, ah, and I'm going to call our robot the Robotler. So we are going to have a Butler robot, which are, is going to be called Robotler. So that's the name of our, the code name of our project. And our Robotler will be in essence, or the basis of it will be a turtle bot three uh, waffle pie. Uh, therefore, what we are going to do for starters is to create a package called Robotler description. And this package will contain um, the chakras for our robot. Because we are based on the TurtleBot robot, we could just say, okay, use the TurtleBot robot files. But some of those files we want to change because we are going to, we want to change the color, we want to add additional sensors. So some of those files we are going to copy from the TurtleBot repository. All the others we are going to use the ones from the TurtleBot repository. But these three files here, we are going to copy because in, in the future we, we will change them, okay? So I'm going to do this. First, I'm going to create this uh, Robotler description. So first I need to go here and vim.cshrc. I have here something with Robotler, which was uh, something, some, another experiment. So I need to take it away. Yeah, this one. <laughs> Actually, I can change. This is not Robotler description, now this is PSR apartment description, right. Okay, now. <clears throat> now let's create our Robotler description uh, package. Uh, copy path, CD, paste. So we are in part 12. And now we are going to Katkin create package, Robotler. Description. And now this is going to depend as always on ROSPI, ROSCPP, STD, MSGS. 
probably it doesn't need any of those, but I always put them, these three dependencies. Uh, okay, so now we have here our robot load description, which has an include, we don't need it. Uh, and it will contain, so inside a description package is always a package that is used to, to describe a robotic system. And by convention, it has a folder called URDF. And that's where we are going to put our URDFs and chapters. Okay. Uh, now, what we need to copy are the three chakra files from the TurtleBot description package. So we can go here, URDF, find these files and, for example, this one and copy them. But better than that, I will copy them from the local uh, copy of this repository that I already have. So I have here TurtleBot 3, TurtleBot description, URDF. And now I need common properties, one. Uh, I need more space. Waffle Pi Gazebo, two. And Waffle Pi URDF Shackle, three. Okay, so we have three. Let's go up and put them, copy them into the URDF. Okay, here they are, see? Now, first thing, let's change the names. So now this is going to be the chakra of our robot or robot or robotic system. So therefore, let's call it, instead of TurtleBot 3 Waffle Pie, we are going to call it robot Lord. The same for the other one, robot to learn. Dot URDF dot shaker, it was no, yeah, dot URDF dot shaker. Robotler dot URDF dot shaker. Okay, so now we have here three chakra files, and the one that describes the robot, so the, the top one, the top level one, is this one. So this is where it all starts. So you can see here defining the base link, the base footprint, and then a joint, and then the base link, and so on and so forth. And then there is this Robotler gazebo, which is included here. Um, and that we will talk about uh, later on. Uh, but we may, must make sure that our top level file, which is the robotler.urdf.chakro, will actually call the robotler.gazebo.chakro and not the turtlebot3.gazebo.chakro. So we have to change this here, okay? If you see here, I'm including a chakro, which is from the turtlebot3 description. No, now it's going to be from the robotler description. And then it's in the URDF folder, and inside we have the robotler.gazebo.shackle, okay? So now I'm making sure that I'm using this file. I need to do the same for the common properties uh, here above. Robotler, description, common properties. The file, the, the, name, the file name didn't change. Okay, now that we have this, what can we do? Well, for now, I don't think we can see anything or still we need to move forward a little bit. So this is what we have already, okay? Now, <clears throat> let's try to go and prepare the robot bring up. So now we're going to have a different ROS package. So the underscore description, robotic system name underscore description is used to put uh, URDFs and some additional stuff, but basically to describe the robotic system, and the robotic system underscore bring up is used to put the launch files which will, which will start up everything that's needed for the robotic system. So we are going to prepare to create a new package called robotler bring up. Uh, okay, so we go here and now we are going to do catkin create package robotler bring up. Bring up, okay. Uh, we have it here already, robotler bring up. Again, it has an include that is not needed. And we are going to put here launch files. So we need to create a launch folder. And the launch files are going to be those three that I mentioned to you before, uh, that I mentioned to you before. The gazebo.launch, the bringup.launch, and the spawn.launch. All of them are subsets of that launch file that we saw both that I'm going, I'm going to show you again. See this one? So now we are going to split this one into three different launch files, which means that I can actually copy paste this, copy. And now in the launch file, I'm going to create these three files. 
The first one is going to be the gazebo.launch. The second one, can, well, I can just copy paste and then rename spawn.launch and uh, bring up dot launch. Okay. Now, let me go down again to where we were. Okay, so now the gazebo dot, dot launch should launch gazebo. That means it's the second block of turtlebot three dot house. So if I go to the gazebo dot launch and I copy paste, come on. Turtlebot, so let me search turtlebot three house dot launch. Here it is. Okay, so I'm just going to copy paste this one into a different buffer. Okay, now paste. So this is everything. And now we are going to take only block two. That means that all we need to do is to erase this three components. So right now, our gazebo.launch will only launch gazebo in the world, TurtleBot3 gazebo world's TurtleBot3 house. Okay, so let's use the TurtleBot house for starters. Gazebo is done. Now, for the spawn or, yeah, let's do the spawn first. For the spawn, it's actually, we start from everything again and we are spawning here, you can see, okay? So we need to delete everything else, but beware that the spawn line uses the X pose, Y pose, and Z pose. And also, I'm not sure the model is used. I don't, I'm not sure. Okay, so what I mean is that we are going to need the parameters. So we cannot delete the parameters. We can only delete everything else. Okay. So this is the spawn.launch. I'm going to just launch a script called spawn model properly parameterized. Finally, we have the bring up.launch. That's where we are going to. So let's start again from the beginning. And now what do we need? So we are not going to set up gazebo, but when we want to bring up our robot, what do we need to do? We need to first create the robot description parameter. So this one clearly needs to be here. Upload robot description chakra to the gross parameter. Okay. And then we can do something else, not, not right now. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So we've just split all this into different things. And now we can run this. So, for example, I can do something like this. Uh, typical, okay, so I told you that I have eight uh, desktop uh, workspaces. Typically on my number four, I use the code. Number three, so to the left, I have my uh, instructions. And then on the bottom, I have the code running. But now I have to run more stuff. So I'm, I'm going to have on workspace eight, the code running with RVs and our custom code. And on workspace seven, I always have gazebo. So here I'm going to run gazebo, Ro ROS launch. Row Butler, uh, not check the Butler. Mm. Back profile. Cross CD. Row Butler. Ah, yeah. So Ross launch. Row Butler. This uh, launch. Bring up. Sorry. Row Butler bring up. And now we want to launch Gazebo. So. So if all goes well, we are going to see the TurtleBot house with no TurtleBot because we just created our world. Now, on the uh, other desktop, we have to bring up our robot. So we do ROS launch, RoboTler, bring up, bring up. For now, this just loads the parameter, nothing else. And then, Nothing happens still. Then we are going to do ROS launch. Uh, robot learn. Bring up. Spawn. When we do the spawn, it spawns the robot there. Okay. Um, 
okay, so this is all working. It was working before, we just split into different launch files. But now, why do I want to run to use it like this? Because if you want to start up your robot again, it's much easier that you only start up the bring up and the spawn again, instead of starting up Gazebo, because Gazebo takes like two or three minutes to shut down and come back up. And if you are always uh, in need of these three minutes of waiting these three minutes, your development time will be very slow. So typically what we have, we delete the robot here and then we spawn the robot there again after changing some stuff and there you go, okay? If I, did, if I shut down Gazebo, okay, so wait three minutes. Uh, something else that we can do is to call in this, so let's say if we are going to bring up the robot, we want to bring up everything, including the spawning of the robot itself. So we can actually uh, include. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I need, I need, uh, yeah, something like this. So we can actually use an uh, include instruction. which is something like this. So we are going to include, not sure if this, yeah. We are going to include another file, but this is not correct. Let, let me search for a better include because I don't like the, the looks of it, of this one. So I have an include here. So turtlebot I don't need, PSR solutions. Yeah, now part 12. Robot launch description, bring a prep, launch. Bring up. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I don't know why I wasn't liking this. So include file. We have to define which file we are including. So if we want to spawn as well. So the idea here is to spawn, spawn the robot in the zero. Okay. So if we want to spawn the robot in the zero, this is not wait. Yeah, no, yes. Uh, we have to include a file, which is the file, this spawn.launch file. So what is the name of the ROS package? Row Butler, bring up. Where is the, the file? It's in the launch folder. And how is it called? Spawn.launch, okay? So now the pipeline is this from the beginning. So I'm going to wait three minutes now, shutting down the zero. Just so you can, you believe me. I know you don't believe me, so see it how long it takes. And imagine how long it takes in your toasters. Okay. Starting up gazebo. Nothing there. Now, we don't need, now all we need is to bring up our robot. So bring up the robot, that means create it. Okay, there it is. The good thing about splitting is that if I want to do some change, I can again delete it. And then instead of creating it again, using the bring up, I can just spawn it if I want. Okay, that's why I split them into two. Uh, okay, so now we have five minutes. Let me see if we can still move a little bit forward. Yeah, let's just do this visualization. So. For the visualization, uh, I can launch the RVs node just like this. So copy. When I bring up my robot, I also want to visualize it. So I'm going to create. Uh, so I need to close the node here. Okay. So I'm no, no, I don't need to close the node. It's already closed here with this slash. So I'm going to launch the RVs package with the argument minus minus display config. And then I'm going to search for the robot to bring up config visualize.rvs. So I need a config folder to store my visualize.rvs file, which is the configuration of the RVs. Uh, so robot to bring up new folder config. Okay. So now let's run it again. So shut it down. Delete the robot in Gazebo. Don't need to call Gazebo again. Bring up. Okay, so we have Gazebo up and running. 
it went to the default RVs because I still don't have the file, but I can actually configure it. So how can I configure it? I can go and say that I want my robot to be on the base footprint, okay? Then, <laughs> then for now, let's just say this is it. So I'm going to save my file into the proper place. So in my case, this is going to be in Catin Workspace PSR, source, PSR 2223, part 12, PSR Robot up config, and here we have the visualization.rvs. Okay, so now if we shut this down and we delete our robot in gazebo and we run it again. Now we can see uh, everything properly configured. Uh, not really this uh, default, but our, that's strange. I don't think it found the file. Let's see if the file is already there. So robot learning up, config, visualization.rvs. Uh, okay, visualization, visualization. Okay, so let's try again. Okay, visualization.rvs. So now, for example, if I say that I want to see the camera from the robot, so that means I want to see the simulated image based on wh where the robot is and where it's looking and where the camera is positioned, I can actually add here an image. Image. And this image, so let me put the image on the right. And this image will be from topic camera RGB image ROM. Okay, so this is what the simulation synthesizes based on where it knows the robot is and the scene is. So uh, I'm going to record this uh, using the control S. So whenever I change something here, you can see an asterisk there. That means it's unsaved. So what I do typically is I do control S and now it's safe, okay? The good thing is now that whenever I launch this again, I don't have to configure anything else again, okay? It's there already. Um, now, this is the image. Of course, that the image is that one because, let me put this there, because the robot is actually here, uh, aiming there, okay? I'm not sure, oops. Okay, something like this, okay? But I can pick up my robot and I can rotate it, for example, a little bit. And you can see that the image changes, okay? So Gazebo is actually synthesizing the image based on where the robot is. And of course, if I change the environment, so, so I told you I'm God here in this context. So I can actually say there is no house. So there is no image of a house, okay? So you can play golf, I'm sure you'll love it. Um, uh, we, we, we continue doing this on the practical classes, okay? See you in five minutes. <clears throat>